Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on a funeral elegy and today we're going to take a look at lines 265 to 292. So this is a bit of a longish chunk, but it is, as all the other ones have been, a continuation of what we started in with yesterday. Uh, the author had been saying, you know, he hopes maybe if he died, if he had been the one to die first, then Sir William Peter would have written something lovely about him, but he's going to use this opportunity in writing the elegy to first assuage his own guilt at not having expressed himself better while Sir William Peter was alive, but also to like quell any potential rumors that might be spreading around because people have a tendency to latch on to the worst things about someone and, and let those things grow. And line 265 says, Hence can stir they with corrupt commentaries proceeding from a nature as corrupt, the text of malice, which so often varies as tis by seeming reason under propped. Oh, whither tends the lamentable spite of this world's teenful apprehension, which understands all things amiss, whose light shines not amidst the dark of their dissension. True tis, this man, well, yet he was a man, <laughs> soothed not the current of besotted fashion, nor could digest, as some loose mimics can, an empty sound of overweening passion, so much to be made servant to the base and sensual aptness of disunioned vices, to purchase commendation by disgrace, whereto the world and heat of sin entices. But, in a safer contemplation, secure in what he knew, he ever chose the ready way to commendation by shunning all invitement strange of those whose illness is the necessary praise must wait upon their actions. Only rare in being rare in shame, which strives to raise their name by doing what they do not care as if the free commission of their ill were even as boundless as their prompt desires, only like lords, like subjects to their will, which their fond dotage evermore admires. So he's, he's continuing with the, you know, people tend to latch on to the worst of things, even if it doesn't make sense that they would latch on to those worst of things, you know, by seeming reason under propped. It, people, will, people will take rumors and just sort of run with them, and, and that's what they do. And, and what he says is, you know, Sir William Peter, yes, he wasn't like the most fashionable of man, and he, he wasn't like super enthusiastic about things and, and, you know, overly effusive about some things, um, but he... He knew what he knew, and he remained steadfast and true. And I didn't mean to rhyme with that, but he he would not pay attention to all of that other garbage that was going on around him. You know, these sh these shameful people that are talking about the great things that they did, even though those things that they did really weren't great. You know, he didn't fall into any of that. He didn't fall into those patterns, and he he didn't buy into that. He just he stayed. He stayed steady and true to be a good person, sort of, regardless of all of the garbage that was going on around him. So we're, we're back to praising him and saying what a great guy he was, which is what you're supposed to do in an elegy. But yeah, we'll, we'll get around to some more other stuff. We're, we're only about halfway through this, so we, we've got a little way to go. Well, a little more than halfway. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow for more. Mwah.